It's finally time for another MCU director ranking, and in this video, we're taking a look at Louis Leterrier, who I think uh, I pronounced his name wrong in the last video, so... Next time, I'll be taking a look at Louis Leterrier's filmography. Louis Leterrier. Leterrier. Sorry about that. I've taken a look at his filmography already, and it didn't look the most inspiring, but there's always a chance I could be wrong. Believe it or not, it has happened before. Let's find out. I debated quite a bit with myself on whether I should include this movie in the ranking or not. While Corey Yun is listed as the director, when I was gathering these films from Letterboxd, I saw that Louis Leterrier was listed as co-director, and I had to decide if a co-director credit counted for the purposes of the series. Eventually I decided that it would, because there are a handful of films later in this series where the subject of the video will not be the only director. In fact, in one of these movies, he isn't credited at all. But then I got into the movie, and I saw that Leterrier was not credited as co-director, but instead as artistic director. So then I had to look up just how much he contributed to this movie to determine if I should count it or not, only for Wikipedia to go, yeah, actually, he is a co-director. They just credit him as an artistic director for some reason. So that was fun. Hey, it's Editing Crystal here. So to add on to this whole thing, Letterboxd doesn't even credit him as co-director anymore. Just thought I should bring that up. Anyway, as for the movie itself, I was incredibly disappointed. I was looking for something like Baby Driver. You know, a high-octane action movie with cool car sequences. Instead, I got one kind of cool car sequence and some fight choreography that ranges from bad to just flat-out weird, stiff acting, and probably the most uncomfortable romantic subplot I've witnessed in a movie. From the moment these characters meet and every step along the way, I hated their relationship. You want me to do it in your car? I went into Unleashed expecting another generic cheesy action movie and was pleasantly surprised when it turned out to be so much more. Phenomenal acting, beautiful cinematography, and some very clever editing made this movie something special. Plus, I loved the message about family and how a chosen family can be just as meaningful as the family we're born to. Everyone in this movie gives an incredible performance, but the highlight is the star, Jet Li. His character doesn't speak a single word until 18 minutes into this movie, and yet I was already so invested into him by the time he did. The talent he shows by acting with only his face is seriously impressive. I was also impressed with Bob Hoskins, who to this point I only really knew as Mario and the detective from Who Framed Roger Rabbit. This character shows a completely different side of his range than those do, though it did take me a second to get used to his accent. Danny, what do you want? A piano. Excuse me? Leterrier gets both hands behind the wheel in Transporter 2, being the sole credited director this time, and he delivers... well, he delivers something. Transporter 2 is all over the place. The plot and characters are somewhat hard to follow at times, with the movie trying its damnedest to get from one action sequence to the next. And while the fight choreography is improved from the first movie, the confusing editing makes it hard to fully appreciate that. We do have more car sequences this time, only they fully break the suspension of disbelief that the first movie was already stretching. Still though, I had a good time laughing at its more egregious choices, so that's gotta count for something. It also has a leg up on the first movie by completely ignoring Lai. I seriously cannot stress enough how uncomfortable that whole relationship was. But they found you cooking in his house. I'm French. So? <laughs> Remember in the last video when I mentioned that there's only a handful of MCU movies that I actively dislike? Well, The Incredible Hulk is one of them. Unlike Iron Man 2, however, which reaches that status by being all over the place, The Incredible Hulk joins the list by being one of the worst things a movie can be. Boring. Bad movies can still have the opportunity to be entertaining, but boring movies just end up feeling like work to watch. I think the casting here is pretty good. In fact, I would have been interested to see Edward Norton continue playing Bruce Banner, 
but it is also hard to see him fitting into the Avengers ensemble. This movie has a strange place in the MCU between its lead being recast and its supporting characters rarely showing up, though a couple of them are finally set to make a return. Hey, it's Editing Crystal again. Um, it did not feel right to mention Captain America Brave New Order without also bringing up that the BDS has called for a boycott of this film due to the inclusion of the character Sabra, who in the comics very much represents the interests of apartheid Israel. For the longest time, many MCU fans would have told you this was the worst movie in the franchise. Even though I've always disagreed with them, I do understand where they're coming from. How do you feel? Pissed off, I'm ready for round three. Clash of the Titans is a fantastic epic filled with effects that are incredibly impressive for the era it released. And then they remade it with awful CGI and armor that's made out of lens flares. The first half of the original movie is completely skipped over and the second half is only loosely followed. The main villain is Hades, who's not even present in the original movie. Additionally, I'm tired of Hades being portrayed as a villain in adaptations of Greek mythology. His purpose was to protect the underworld and guard the souls of the dead. He wasn't the one who was actually doing the killing. In fact, in the myths, he rarely even cared about the world above. Speaking of ignoring Greek mythology, a major character in this movie is a djinn. You know, like the Islamic spirits? From the religion that was created thousands of years after the Greek myths are supposed to take place? Any moments of tension in this movie are replaced with senseless action. This movie completely spits in the face of the original, sometimes deliberately. Your very breath is a gift from Olympus. You have insulted powers beyond your comprehension. Conceptually, Now You See Me is an absolutely ridiculous movie. Four magicians attempt to enter a magic secret society by performing a series of heists in broad daylight, somehow not getting caught in a way that matters. And in the end, it's revealed that all of it was a revenge plot orchestrated by the head of this magic secret society. Completely bizarre movie, but I did have a lot of fun with it. The cinematography was engaging, the effects were exciting, and the performances were entertaining. It's certainly not making it into any must-see movie lists, but it's a decent way to spend a couple hours. What is magic? Our argument? Nothing but targeted deception. Grimsby, or The Brothers Grimsby, depending on where you watch it, is an action comedy about an MI6 operative and his man-child brother. While it has the occasional good joke, a majority of the movie feels like it was written by a 12-year-old who's really into South Park. So many jokes where the punchline is just fat or disabled people existing, or an AIDS patient getting shot and spreading the virus through the air into someone else's mouth? That specific situation happens twice. The rest of the jokes feel like they're in a competition to see what can gross you out the most, culminating in, and there's no way I can show any footage of this in the video, the brothers hiding inside an elephant's vagina and getting trapped in there by multiple male elephants who ejaculate onto them. The movie attempts to give a few serious reconnecting moments with the brothers, but it also does that. So that kind of undercuts it. He flies to and from South America with drugs rammed up his bottom. It's either that or a life of crime. The Takedown is a sequel to the French buddy cop movie On the Other Side of the Tracks. This movie improves on that one in many ways. The action is bigger, more of the jokes land, and the actors feel like they have more chemistry this time around. The plot revolves around an exploration of institutional racism and white supremacy, yet almost entirely glosses over the role that police play in those systems. However, the most egregious thing this movie does is have the two cop leads commit breaking and entering against a suspect. The same thing that got them rightfully kicked off the case in the previous movie. It just feels completely tone deaf to have a movie criticizing institutional racism while celebrating two cops who can't even follow due process, especially in the 2020s. Je les ai, je les ai 
Before I started on this video, my only experience with the Fast and Furious franchise was the absolute worst ride at Universal Studios. But now, I've seen every single one of them. This started as a series about street racing, and now it's a series where Michelle Rodriguez gets winter soldiered, Idris Elba is a cyborg, and Ludacris goes to space. Fast X takes on the task of serving as a grand finale to this series. Kind of. I respect its attempt to celebrate the legacy of the franchise, but when only the first three movies were good, these moments feel empty. I can't say I had a terrible time with it though. Much like the other movies in the latter half of the series, Fast X is completely ridiculous with the stunts in a way that's very fun to laugh at. Plus, I genuinely love whatever Jason Momoa was doing in this movie. I feel like he was having the time of his life making this, and his line deliveries always cracked me up. Okay, I'll do it. You guys are going to hell. Averaging out Louis Leterrier's score brings him to a 2.06, far below John Favreau's 3.28. Leterrier is clearly most notable for his action sequences. Even some of his worst movies have some very good action. It seems most likely that Leterrier just doesn't know how to pick which projects he should sign on to, as he doesn't seem to be that involved with story development on any of these. When given a good project, he's able to make a good movie out of it, but most of the time we end up with generic action movies with little to no substance outside of that action. Speaking of which, Louis Leterrier is currently signed on to direct Fast X Part 2, and presumably the recently announced Part 3 as well, but that may not even be real apparently? Either way, we'll have to check back in with him later and see how those future installments affect his average. Until then, I gotta get started on my Kenneth Branagh video. He's got a lot of movies, so don't expect that one to come out super soon.